everyone, my name is Kara Brown and I'm here today to talk to you about increasing your word count. This is a question that I usually get with some frequency when I'm in a live stream and I tell people what my word count is after we do anywhere between like a 15 and a 20 minute sprint and I thought it would just be prudent for me to go ahead and make a video discussing my methods about how I increase my word count and also provide some suggestions for you guys. And without further ado, let's launch into this. If you're new to my channel and you have zero clue who I am, I am an urban fantasy author and I also write romance under the name of Faye Black. Uh, I am often making videos here on YouTube in regards to the life of a writer or one of my passion projects such as tarot, but today I wanted to actually do this presentation talking about word count. And if you are a long time viewer on this channel, you know that there's a couple things I love besides spreadsheets and that's making PowerPoint presentations. But enough about me, let's talk about the topic. There are a few tips and tricks that I do want to share with you guys and the very first one is actually going to be getting a map. And what I mean by getting a map, I mean knowing what you're going to write before you write it, which also means that you may need to actually outline what it is that you are writing. Now I know some of you have either started to hiss at me or roll your eyes, uh, but stick with me for just a moment. Uh, when I mean knowing what you're going to write, it is you know, for some individuals, it does work really well to have some kind of idea of what it is that you are going to write when you have a writing session. So anytime I am about to sit down on a writing sprint or somebody else's live stream, you'll occasionally see me stop and look down and start jotting some things down. And what I'm really doing is making a, a very minimalist power or uh, bullet point outline of what it is that I'm going to write for that session and it's like I said it's minimalist so I'll write a phrase such as Angus talks to Hades or Persephone confronts Cassie right but I'm not saying what that's going to look like because oftentimes I end up like panting the characters and what it is that they're going to do and I find that's a lot of fun for me to work with but uh, what I'm trying to get to is that if you can jot down what it is that you're going to write in your given session, uh, then that's going to help you be productive and stay on track. And this is an idea that I actually got from Rachel Aaron's 2K to 10K book. And she has a lot of good information in this book I would recommend to you. And uh, I'll leave a link down below for you guys to go ahead and peruse that on your own time. Now, I'm pretty confident this was the reaction I got when I said that you have to plan where you're going. I know that there are a lot of discovery writers out there, and I really respect how you guys write. And so I know that when I say you need to make a plan, you're going to immediately resist, you're going to thrash, and you're going to be like, you can't contain me, and that's fine. I'm there with you. Um, so these next few suggestions that I have for you uh, are actually inclusive to discovery writers. If you want to increase your work count, love what it is that you are writing. Do not sit and make yourself write a scene that feels like pulling teeth. It, that is just not how you're going. It, it doesn't work. It does not work at all. You'll sit there, you'll be grumpy, and you'll get frustrated, and it's just not going to be a good time. And here's the question I want to propose to you. You may have heard this before from other people, but here it is. If you are not excited to write it, why do you think that your reader will enjoy it? And that's just a basic fact. Uh, if I have to write something and I don't like it and I think it's really boring, I can't imagine anybody who would be my intended reader that would enjoy it as, as well. In fact, in the past when I have written scenes that I did not have a good time with, when I have taken those to writing groups, those are the scenes that get ripped apart the most because they can tell that I was not enjoying it and they did not enjoy it either. And I think nine times out of ten, I ended up having to scrap those scenes and write scenes that I really did enjoy. So. If you are struggling with what it is that you're writing, stop and take a moment to ask yourself why. Do you not like the scene? Are you not enjoying it? How can you twist it or turn it so that way it is something that you are having fun writing? Now that kind of ties into the motivation of why is it that you're writing what you are writing? And this is a question that only you can answer. I can't like, you know, I can't open your skull and peer into your brain and then pull out your soul and, you know, dig into all that stuff. Only you are going to be able to answer what it is that is driving you to write your story. A lot of people, when they're asked, you know, why is it that you write what you write? They're like, oh man, I just love to explore worlds or I'm just like, I've always wanted to write since I was a kid. And then you get people like me who say, I have bills. You are going to have to figure out what it is that is motivating you to write your book and then what it is that's going to motivate you to write that scene. Uh, sometimes it's like, well, I have to write 2,000 words today or whatever your word count for the day is. Um, other times it could just be something as simple as it is your escapism from what's going on. And as long as you're having a good time and you are motivated to write it, what it is that you're writing, it's fine. This next tip will come to no surprise of any longtime viewer of this channel where I am asking you, instead of trying to outline your work and 
figure out what it is that you're going to write. I'm asking you to outline your progress and when you want to reach certain benchmarks. This is a common practice for individuals who like to do a quarterly goal system where they basically say during the course of this month I will write 20,000 words and when they make these goals they try to make sure that they are reasonable and achievable which I would really encourage everybody to do. Now goals and benchmarks work differently for different individuals. Obviously we all have different mentalities, we all have different work ethics, and we all have different family lives as well. I work from home, I'm an entrepreneur, right? So I have pretty much a couple hours a day to sit down and crank out 2,000 words. Where an individual who has multiple children and some pets and maybe some other homestead stuff going on may not have that much time. Only you are able to decide what goals and benchmarks are going to be realistic for you and if they're going to work for you in general. For individuals who do writing kind of as a hobby, maybe doing a word count or a deadline isn't going to be something that works for you. And I've also met people who will give themselves a daily word count that they try to achieve, but they don't give themselves deadlines. Um, I think it's Sky who likes to do the quote of, I like the sound that deadlines make when they wish on by. Some people just don't do well with deadlines. And if you know that you are that kind of person, then don't give yourself a deadline. Find out a way to do some kind of benchmark that you can achieve in a way that works for you, whether it be a Kanban board or a workflow, or if you gotta just do it on a piece of notebook paper, that's fine too. One thing that I would really, 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 really encourage you to do is to make sure that when you make these goals that you are realistic with yourself and what you can do. Um, too often do I see individuals who have a moment of high energy and they're like, I can do anything and they make all these lofty goals and within a month they hate themselves for it. So whenever you decide to make these goals or these benchmarks, I always tell people to plan as if you were going to be sick the entire time because you're going to have down days, you're going to have some stuff that comes over, but if you plan, like I said, that you're going to be sick the entire time, it's going to give you a bit more wiggle room and it's going to help you out a lot more in the long term. Trust me on this. And doing that is really important because the next thing that I would tell you to do as a writer and trying to make sure that you maintain a high word count is to keep your well filled, to avoid burnout. There is nothing like having a lot of energy and writing and then all of a sudden looking at your manuscript and hating it or not feeling any energy to write. This happens way, way, way too often within the author community, especially with indie authors because what do we often do as an indie author? Well, we have to write our own books, we have to do our own marketing plan, we have to do our own social media, and we have to go and basically combat anything else that happens with the fact that we have total creative control. So take the time when you are writing to make sure that you are refilling your well and that you are taking care of yourself mentally, whether that be reading, being active, uh, some kind of hobby that you enjoy doing. Um, on the slide here, you're going to see that I have the word listen in parentheses. And what I mean by that is I need you guys to make sure that you're listening to your brain and your body. Um, too often have I seen individuals who are working really hard and they're just really plowing through it and they're trying to get all the stuff done and then suddenly they're gone for like three to five days. And what happened in that three to five days is that they mentally worked themselves so hard that their body said, no, it's time for you to sit down now and they'll be gone. And in those three to five days, they're doing these things that I'm advising you to do. They're reading, they're spending time with family, they're watching some movies, they're refilling their well. And rather than losing a whole chunk of time like that, work this refilling well process into your daily schedule right? Uh, when I was in college, or actually I'm still in college, let me rephrase that. When I was doing my bachelor's, um, I was very busy because not only was I trying to obviously go to college, but I was doing an internship and I was working full time as well. And I had to, in my agenda, plan for me to do downtime things like enjoy a glass of you know, wine with my spouse or have a mandatory movie night. Like I had to do that because if I did not plan those things into my daily life, I was going to literally lose all my hair. It was, it was no fun, no bueno. I learned a lot about time management. And if you have to plan for your mandatory fun, then do that because it's a lot better than the alternative of basically having a mental breakdown. And on that note, uh, I have this little image that I got from Google on here. And you guys have my full hearted encouragement to have days off from writing. Um, I know sometimes there's a train of thought that says if you're not writing every day, you're doing yourself a disservice. I've seen this in the art community as well. 
and I have mixed thoughts on it. Um, in my humble opinion, I have done the most writing after I haven't been writing. Um, uh, for those of you who are not aware, earlier this year, I took two weeks off of social media. I like, literally took two weeks off. And during those two weeks, um, for the first couple of days, like I was just having like a brain, like a brain mellow time. And then after that, the gears in my head started to work. I thought of a story and then I started outlining the story. And then we're getting to today and I've written almost 80,000 words of this story. Take some time off. Don't write all the time. Read, do something else. You have, I, I would really encourage it. Or if you are the kind of person who thinks that if I don't write every day, then I'm going to lose the story, I'm not going to stop you. But do consider just taking a little bit of time off every now and then to just kind of walk away. Walk If you can't go outside, go outside or find some other recreational non-writing hobby to kind of help you with that. In summary, those are my recommendations and things that I would encourage you to do in order to help increase your word count, which I know for some individuals you may have been expecting like more tips and tricks about how to like type faster and all that other stuff. I probably could have mentioned about fast drafting and about how when I do write my stuff, I basically type without looking back, which is a method. But to be really honest, all this stuff that I shared with you have been the big key factors about why I've been able to produce the word counts that I do in the live streams and off the screen as well. Um, if you guys have your own tips and tricks that you would like to share, please feel free to leave those down below. I would love to read what works for you and also provide a bank of suggestions that other people who are seeing this video can kind of look at and see what works for you and that may work for them. Because again, as I said in the beginning of the video, we are all very different people. We have different mentalities, we have different approaches, and we have different lifestyles. So what works for me may not work for you. Again, feel free to leave those suggestions down there for our folks. That is going to be me for the day though. Thank you guys so much for coming over and seeing what I have to say about this topic. Really do appreciate it. Down below in the description, I've got links to my books. I've got links to the Evergreen Writing Retreat that we held a little while ago, which was basically a bunch of wonderful panels and workshops in regards to the life of a writer. Please feel free to check it out. It is totally free and I think it's got a lot of good stuff to offer for you. Um, I, tomorrow I am posting my contribution to Wordstock, which has to do with story structure. And for those of you who don't know what word stock is i will leave a link down in the description so you can check that out as well but that's going to be me for the day thank you all so much for coming and hanging out with me and i hope you all have a good weekend